In the previous lecture where we talked about the law of demand, and we stated that the quantity of a good or service demanded varies inversely to price. So that means if the price of that good or service increases, then the quantity demanded for that goods or service would decrease. We talked about that, but we didn't talk about the sensitivity of the demand in different markets. And that's where the concept of the price elasticity of demand comes in. So the price elasticity of demand relates to the responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a good or service to, the, to its price. Now there are three different types of price elasticity of demand. Firstly, we have an elastic demand product. Secondly, we have a product with unit elasticity. And thirdly, we have a product with an inelastic demand curve. Let's go through all three systematically. Okay. Starting off with the elastic demand curve. What the elastic demand curve suggests is that the change in price would reflect in a proportionally more greater change in quantity demanded. So what this means is a small change in price will respond to will reflect in a large change in quantity demanded. So obviously the slope of the demand curve is negative. So the down it is downward sloping as per the law of demand, which suggests that as price increases, the quantity demanded decreases. So that's where the negative slope comes from. And we talked about this in our earliest lecture on the law of demand. So when we have an elastic demand curve, this demand curve is relatively flat. And what that means is that if we start off at P1 right here, and we want to decrease our price to P2, this will respond in a fairly large change in quantity demanded. As we can see from the analysis of the graph, the quantity demanded at point P, P1, would be at Q1. And the quantity demanded at P2, <clears throat> when the price decreases from P1, would be here at Q2. And as we can see, this gap is significantly larger than this gap right here. And so this product here has an elastic demand curve, which suggests that a decrease in price will respond, will reflect in a larger decrease, increase in quantity demanded. And similarly, if we were to look at the reverse, if the price had increased from P2 to P1, then this product would have um, experienced a decrease in demand from Q2 to Q1. Secondly, we have a unit elastic product. And what this means is that the demand curve has a gradient of 1. So let's assume that this has a gradient of 1. So m equals 1, where m denotes the gradient. If we say the price of the product starts off at P1, the quantity corresponding quantity would also be at Q1. Say this price had decreases has decreased to P2. The price of this product is now at P2, and so the quantity demanded at P2, according to this demand curve, would be at Q2. And as we can see, that as the price decreases from P1 to P2, we can see a corresponding proportional increase in the quantity demanded by consumers. And similarly, if we can look at the reverse, if the price had increased from P2 to P1, we will see a corresponding proportionate decrease in quantity demanded from Q2 to Q1. Finally, we have an elast inelastic demand curve. And what this means is that a change in price would reflect in a small change in the quantity demanded because the rubber band, or if you think about elastics, the rubber band is not elastic at all. It is very inelastic, so you cannot stretch out the quantity demanded. And this was reflected by a very steep demand curve, which looks a bit like this. Okay. As we can see now, if we start off with P1 again, and the price has decreased to P2, we can see that the corresponding quantity demanded has not been affected 
as proportionately as much. So Q1, which corresponds to the price at P1, has increased to Q2, which corresponds to the price at P2. As we can see that this change in price from P1 to P2 is much greater than the change in quantity demanded from Q1 to Q2. And if we look at the reverse, if the quantity, if the price had decreased or increased from P2 to P1, then the quantity demanded would have decreased from Q2 to Q1. And this quantity, this change in quantity, even though this change in price is the same magnitude as the change in price here, where the product is has a elastic demand curve, the change in quantity demanded is significantly greater than a product with an inelastic demand curve. And so this is the theory line behind the price elasticity of demand. It is the responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a good or of a service to the price.